Hello, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm Giulia Carla Rossi, and I'm here today with uh, Linda Clark to talk to you about emerging formats and specifically interactive digital narratives and how the British Library and other legal deposit libraries in the UK are approaching, collecting and preserving complex digital publications. So these are a few examples of the emerging formats that we've been researching. And these are all stories that use new technology and platforms to kind of deliver a narrative that couldn't be replicated in any other way. Um, they are usually apps or web-based interactive narratives, which include a mix um, and variety of format types. So usually it's a mix between like video, audio and text. Um, and they often use these formats types in new and experimental ways. So the Emerging Formats project uh, started in response to non-print legal deposit regulations, which came into force in 2013, uh, when for the first time the Legal Deposit Act included non-print works alongside print. And since then, the UK legal deposit libraries have been collecting uh, various types of born digital publications. So the Emerging Formats project is a collaborative effort um, from all six legal deposit libraries uh, one of which is the British Library, um, to look at digital publications that are in scope for collection under non-print legal deposit regulations, but whose formats are more complex than those currently in our collection um, and could also be challenging to our existing collecting practices. So we identified a series of characteristics to help us define what we mean by emerging formats. Um, they are born digital publications that exist uh, uniquely in digital form, so they cannot really be recreated in print without that affecting the delivery of the content as well as the user experience. They often consist of more than one media type, um, so as I said before, a mix of um, audio, film and text, for example. Um, they are device dependent, so they are dependent on software, which is usually bespoke, and as well as the hardware in order to run. They are constituted by formats that are complex and components that might actually never standardized. Um, they're not typically part of existing collection, even at other collecting institutions, and they are often at risk of rapid obsolescence. So the legal deposit libraries have decided to prioritize two types of formats. The first one is book as mobile apps, um, which are digital books published as mobile apps. Um, they often make use of interactive functionalities that are typical of mobile technology. Um, the second format we decided to focus on was web-based interactive narratives. And these are text-based stories um, that expect the reader to make decisions in order to determine how the narrative unfolds. And web-based interactive narratives is what Linda's research has actually been focusing on. So over to Linda now. Thank you, Julia. Um, so I'm just gonna talk you through some of the challenges we've faced while um, collecting um, works for this project. Okay, is that it? Am I back? I'm here very well, Linda. Oh no. Yeah, you're back now. Is that it? Am I back? Maybe you're back, maybe you're not back. I'm not sure. Maybe try turning the camera portion off and we could hear your voice as a backup. Yeah, let me try that way. Is that better? Yes. Okay, yeah, better, great. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't know why it's suddenly chosen now to do this. It's very irritating. Um, yes, so I was just going to talk you through some of the challenges that we faced when collecting um, these items. And while I'm talking, you might want to, given the, the kind of nature of, um, of this fund, you might want to think about how AI might um, be able to kind of take over some of these things, how it might fail to, to do some of these things and, and might always require somebody to manually do them. So next one, please. 
so our first challenge was finding the work. So there's no kind of main um, publisher or distributor for interactive fiction in the same way that there are books. Um, there are lots of kind of small independent places. There's lots of competitions, but they're kind of spread around quite a lot. Um, and so we had to do quite a lot of manual hunting of those down, uh, hunting those down. We also um, put a call out on the library's website uh, um, to ask um, creators to come forward and share their work with us. Next one, please, Julia. Um, so the next challenge is knowing what to collect. So there's the various criteria that, that Julia mentioned. Um, that we had to make sure it did those, but then there's other things as well. So if things are behind a paywall, then technologically it's very difficult to, to care. Um, so they had to be ruled out. And then there's also kind of ethical concerns. So did the writer really intend to publish this piece of work? And one of the ways that we thought about that was whether the entire thing was available, whether it was available on kind of a very public site. Uh, next one. Um, and then there's also that, that question of genre. So um, some of the work is kind of potentially tipped over into video game. Like, does that still come within the library's remit, remit to collect? So this particular one um, was made with RPG G Maker, which is typically a video game um, tool, but the writer themselves distinguished it as being interactive fiction. So that did go into the collection. Uh, next one, please. So the main two tools that we used were Conifer, which is um, primarily used for kind of uh, collecting sort of uh, very visual or audio based things. And then uh, the uh, ACT tool, which is the, the library's own um, method of collecting for um, the web archive and is a more general kind of web crawler. Next one, please. Um, so some of the challenges with that is things that had lots of images or kind of dynamic elements, it didn't always immediately get collected with a, with a standard crawl. So there were two ways of fixing that really. One was to find the, the individual link that contained that element that wasn't coming in there and manually add that into, um, into the web archives crawl or to use Conifer and that would generally just grab those, those as part of the, uh, the recording of that page. Next one. Um, some of the issues arose because of the um, settings that the creators had used when uploading their work. So this one uh, was on the popular platform Itch and the, there's kind of a whole suite of functions and things that the, that the users can choose. And some of them interfered with, with the crawlers. And so there was also that to look into and consider whether or not we could collect things. So, and I'll hand back to Julia just to finish up. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to conclude with this slide um, to sort of highlight how some of the collection challenges that Linda just mentioned also apply to AI, uh, whether it's using AI to collect other types of emerging formats or actually collecting examples of AIs, uh, which is something that we haven't really experimented with yet, um, but could be an interesting challenge for us in the future. Um, so we thought it would be good to kind of end on this as our provocation slash discussion points uh, for the breakout rooms later on. And that's it for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda.